Hello, welcome to Veterans Remember. My name is Dick Gooding and I'm your host. And uh, we are interviewing or spend a little time talking with our veterans here in Hopkinton. And there are many, many uh, veterans of, uh, of service and, and veterans of uh, foreign wars here in Hopkinton. And they've, uh, uh, many of them have come to Veterans Remember to uh, explain their stories, talk about some of their, their service, some in war, some not in war, uh, and it's really a, a, an education, and we hope that uh, the folks in Hopkinton will appreciate having the opportunity to, to sit in on some of these conversations. And uh, uh, we, we've uh, spent a lot of time with the World War II veterans, and uh, we've had a, a treasure trove of, uh, of interviews and discussions that are available on DVD and are shown on HCAM on a regular basis. Joining us today is Ralph Edwards. Ralph's been in town for an awful long time, is a good friend, and meeting Legion meetings and, vet and uh, veterans breakfasts. And uh, I'd like to welcome you to Veterans Remember, Ralph. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe you can start off by telling us a little bit about your youth. And uh, I understand you grew up in, in uh, Newton. Maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, when I was about, uh, Oh, I think it was uh, five years old. Um, my mother, uh, after she graduated from college, she came to Newton and went into training as a nurse and had been a nurse for quite some time and uh, married. Uh, then uh, her parents from Nova Scotia were becoming kind of in a situation where they needed help, you know, medically. Mm -hmm. So we decided to move bag and baggage to uh, Nova Scotia, and we, I stayed there for about five years. And uh, then when the Depression came, uh, my father had started a little business, and that went to pot. And <laughs> so we just picked up and came back to Newton, and we still had our apartment in Newton because they owned a two-family house. And um, so then, uh, you know, I went to school in Newton and what have you. And when it came time to uh, a high school, uh, we used to have Sandlot football. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, some of the guys that were on there we went to the same church we did. So <laughs> I guess I tackled this one fellow a little bit too hard. And he went home and told his mother and father about me, you know, in the football. And they talked my mother and father into going to Freiburg Academy. And that's a private had, school up in Maine, right? Yes, that's yeah. right. And he, that was a, what he was thinking was about the football team up mm -hmm. there, so I, which I did. And I went up there and I, uh, uh, I played on the football team and the, and the baseball team. And uh, then uh, I, uh, I was a, a junior and uh, they wouldn't let, uh, well, when I was 17, I tried to volunteer to get in the Navy, but uh, the very last thing they, they had for the physical was a, a square thing with a number on it, and I thought the guy was kidding me. <laughs> I said, I don't see any number on there. Oh, well, color well, blind this time. Yeah, that's, uh, so that, that jinked it for me getting into the Navy. So when I turned 18, I just went into the uh, Army and ended up in uh, Camp Edwards uh, and went into the anti-aircraft outfit there. Camp Edwards and, right down on the Cape. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> we were on this uh, 4.7 gun that we trained on. And uh, we actually had real excellent training there because they taught us not only to, how to feel, do uh, anti-aircraft, but field artillery and coast artillery. Mm -hmm. They had in the coast artillery, they had a plane that would take a sleeve and, and we'd be firing at that. Well, what happened was, uh, they had this thing, I'm not quite sure now what they called it, but uh, uh, they were tracking us. And what happened was, for some reason or other, the, the things started creeping up on the cable that the, the, uh, the cable was on, and one of the shots went in front of the plane. Oh, so it was a plane that was towing a target? Yeah. I see. And it was a metal, uh, metal uh, cable, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the shots went in front of the plane, Instead of on the sleeve. Oh, wow. Well, all of a sudden, this plane takes off like a big bird, you know. And that was the end of that. <laughs> but then they had this, uh, I think, it was, I don't know, would it be radar, I maybe? That what they did is uh, 
Um, we fired over the ocean, but they were taking pictures of the plane in back of us. So that after we were all done, what they could do is put, take that picture. Everything was synchronized. Mm -hmm. They could uh, take that film and they could tell uh, when they put the thing together whether well, we actually would have hit the plane if it was there, see? Right. So that's, that's the way they did it. Well, that's a, uh, so that's interesting. So this was sort of a, uh, uh, an experimental uh, weapon or anti-aircraft weapon. Well, and did, did you, we didn't you, you know shot that. Right, you shot right out into the water in yes. the ocean? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But we didn't know it was experimental, though, at the time, you know? Yeah. So anyway, to make a long story short, when we, we left there and went to the Republic Aircraft Company down in, in New York. And this, is, this was what, in uh, 43, 44? Yeah, yeah. I, was in, I went in at, in 43. I see. So it'd be close to 44, probably, that when we decided to leave camp. What kind it? of aircraft were they making there? Uh, you know, I'm not even sure about mm -hmm. that. Uh, but anyway, we, this was for protection. Well, we were there for not too long a time when they sent us down to Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And uh, <clears throat> as far as we know, we were still doing some training, you know. And you were, you were still, uh, Air Defense Artillery was, and, your, that's was right. your unit. The uh, anti-aircraft gun, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the funny part of it was, one morning we woke up and things was, there was all kinds of different equipment down there, you know, field artillery, tanks, and all kinds of stuff there. And uh, we woke up the next morning, God, everything was so quiet, we couldn't figure what was going on, you know? So somebody find out, oh, they shipped out last night. And uh, come to find out, we were supposed to go with them. But because we had some problems with the gun, which they weren't able to solve, um, we, we ended up going out of the anti-aircraft business and uh, they sent us out to Camp Swift, Texas for infantry training. So instead of going over to Europe, you... Uh, That's right. So they, yeah. they really, would they uh, discontinue your, your unit? Yeah, yeah. completely. Huh. And so we went out there and we had some infantry training and everything. Well, then we came back to Boston and that's when we shipped out to go over to this overseas. And we end up in La Havre, France. And... Um, well, this must have been, uh, what, a couple months after D-Day? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, we, we got over there. The, uh, the, and the thing was that this outfit that we were uh, we we're going to go over with was ended up in the ba Battle of the Bulge. Oh, is that right? Yes, and uh, of course, uh, <laughs> when we heard about all about that stuff, when we got over to La Havre, you know, I said, uh "Oh," and you know, we were a nervous wreck. Be, well, we were only 18 <laughs> years old, and we didn't know what the heck was going on, you know. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, the first night we landed over there, we had uh, we saved in this. Uh, um, was just mostly like woods. And uh, you know how each fella had a shelter half and you put them together? Right, that's make what a we pup slept tent. there that night, yeah. Well, what happened was, I guess it was uh, uh, the moon was out and it was kind of cloudy. And you know how when a cloud goes past the moon, it casts a shadow on the ground. And we had a, a sentry out there, you know. And all of a sudden we <laughs> heard him hollering, Halt, who's there? And it, he kept saying that, you know, and geez, we didn't know what the heck was going on, you know. We were nervous as a bird anyway. <laughs> and we thought World War III was going to start right then and there, you know. <laughs> but anyway, that's what it was. It was just this, this shadow that looked like somebody was moving in the woods, <laughs> woods you know. Well, anyway, that was that. However, um, when we, uh, by truck, they transferred us out to um, Stuttgart, Germany. Right into, right into Germany itself. Yeah, yeah. Were things starting to wind down about yes, that point? Yes, yes. Yeah. I would say so, yes. Mm -hmm. But we didn't know for sure, you know, sure. what was going on. But... Uh, and what did you do in Stuttgart? Well, in Stuttgart, um, we were, we were, they were, they were going to put us in this field artillery outfit in the beginning, you know, and they hemmed and hawed about it, you know, and time's going on. And then we fi I finally ended up this signal light construction company. And what they were doing, they were you know, telling telephone lines and installing all that kind of stuff, you know. So uh, 
And that, uh, I had a, one of the jobs I had was uh, driving a Jeep and uh, my uh, officer there that was in charge of the construction, um, I had to take them around to different places where they were doing that, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, then next thing you know, I might have to take, drive a two and a half ton truck to uh, uh, take them over for repairs and stuff like that and uh, supplies and all that. And uh, like, and then I would take a Jeep, say, because uh, they take over a house or something, you know, they, and uh, that's where we would stay. And it was a small town outside of Stuttgart that where they we were holed up in an elementary school. Really? Well, yeah. Well, remember the name of that town? Yeah, uh, I'll tell you what the name of that was. It was um, uh, Essington, okay. E S S L I G E N, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just outside of uh, Stuttgart. And uh, <clears throat> but then. Uh, uh, they would also sometimes just go in and take over a house. Sure. And in the winter time, they they say to me, "Well, they'll give me a, some kind of an order to go down and put an order in for coal to heat the house with." <laughs> so mm -hmm. I never knew what was going to come up. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, the sad part of some of the stuff is that uh, um, one of my good friends uh, was in a jeep, and they were going out and uh, you know to work. And they went across this field and hit a landmine and killed them all. Oh, well, yeah. That's tragic. So that wasn't too great. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, right after the war, when they discovered the armistice, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, um, what the infantry was going through uh, the towns and, uh, and looking for, uh, going through houses, looking for arms and looking stuff that weapons. they might have. Sure. You know. And then what they'd do is they'd uh, put them in a truck and take them to a, one particular spot. Well, this one time, uh, the hospital out there, we uh, got on that uh, detail and uh, <clears throat> uh, we were having a, a lot of the other guys from the infantry there putting all this stuff on the truck. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened was this one day, uh, I'm sitting on one side, of the, uh, standing on one side of the truck, and this other kid was on the other side, and we're facing each other. And all of a sudden, I heard this click. I said, looked up, and I said, hey, don't point that thing at me, for Christ's sake. What's the matter with you? Well, that was that. But about uh, a minute after that, all of a sudden, I hear bang, and the damn gun went off, and the our lieutenant was just getting on the truck and shot him right through the head. Shot the, the lieutenant? Foot. Yeah. Really? But, and the guy had been all through the whole down war and never had a scratch. Jeez. And that was hell to pay over that, now I can tell you that. Hmm. Well, you know, it was like down at Camp Edwards, so when that, you know, that shell I told you, was, uh, they had a problem right. with it? And they had a hole outside of the, where we were dug in. And my, my friend had to go up the ladder, take that shell and put it in a hole. Made us all go back. And uh, so all of a sudden we hear bang, and that they, they set the shell off in the hole, you know. But, and I'm, we're all standing there, and I was like, here, plop. Well, well, just a few feet from where I was standing, one of the shells, fragments, landed right there on the ground in front of you, and it was about this, this big. Wow. Right, if ever hit, would you tear you right apart, you know? Yeah. That was one thing, and then this guy with the gun to, aiming at me, and I said, gee, that could have been me too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so we had all sorts of little things like that would happen, you know? Well, how long did you did you spend over in uh, in Germany? Uh, one year. One one year. Well, and mostly about a year. Yeah. Mostly after the war had. Yeah, so mostly the army, after. You were part yeah. of the army of occupation. Yeah, yeah. And you know, uh, we did a little bit of. Uh, well, in some of the cities and towns, they'd send us out there. It is like uh, we'd be wandering through the town. We'd have, you know. Uh, several guys at, at together and they'd be going through the town because a lot of problems came up there and especially this Hitler youth. Mm -hmm. Those little buggers there, I'm telling you, they were really a pain in the neck. And well, they, see, they were trained with all this stuff, you know, coming up and uh, killing every summer. It wouldn't make any difference to them anyway because that's what they were trained to do. You know? Sure, sure. Well, uh, we had quite a little time with them, but uh, when they got the rifle butt against the side of the head, um, they decided maybe they should shape up a little bit, you know. 
<laughs> yeah, plus that's other for sure. stuff, you know. <laughs> but uh, we'd go on details like that uh, mm -hmm. off and on, and then, and then of course, we'd be do, doing the uh, on the. Um, I used to still drive a jeep and 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 do that also, and um, but basically uh, <clears throat> it was mainly things like that. They they mm -hmm. we never knew sometimes from one day to the next what they would want us to do and. Uh, because we really, I don't know, uh, I guess we were mostly tied to the uh, uh, signal uh, light construction company more, more or less than anything, you know. So sure. we did most of that kind of stuff. Well, when you came, when you came back from Germany, did you uh, muster out pretty quickly or did you well, what stay happened, in the service for a while? What happened was that uh, all of a sudden they came up and they said, hey, we want you to turn all your equipment in. and. Uh, Somebody spread the union and said, Jesus, they're going to send us to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, what we found out was that actually we got uh, out because of the amount of service, the years that we were in it, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, so we shipped back and uh, Statue of Liberty looked pretty good to us as we came <laughs> to New York Harbor. And then from uh, that, we... Um, Ah, uh, let's see. It wasn't Fort Bragg, but uh, it was another one of those down in New Jersey someplace. Fort Dix? Fort Dix, mm -hmm. yeah. So we went down there, and then uh, we went by train back to Fort Devens, Mass. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, that's where I was discharged from. But uh, after I got out of there, see, they wouldn't let us start our senior year in high school. So they had a special course there in Newton for, for the veterans to finished his senior year. Oh boy, that's good. And uh, my history teacher kept saying to me, she says, you know, your name sounds familiar to me and I can't, I'm trying to figure out why I know your name. Well, he was a, uh, a scout for the Boston Braves. Well, I don't know, when I, I was pretty fair playing baseball, you know. And evidently, somebody gave him my name, and he came out to scout me while I was out there <laughs> and playing baseball. You know? Well, you know, we have a, an awful lot of veterans, uh, particularly World War II veterans, who were pretty, pretty decent baseball players, and yeah. uh, you know, played in. Uh, we had a couple of people who played on, actually played on a team for their oh, service. And, yeah, uh, while while we were in, uh, in Camp uh, Edwards. Mm -hmm. We had a couple of our guys there get on a, a baseball team while we were in there. Yeah, yeah. Now, that happened, I guess, all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they uh, and, and there's some pretty good, some pretty good baseball players came out of Hopkinton. Yeah, yeah. And, and I didn't realize you were another one of them. Yeah. How did you get to Hopkinton? How did I get to Hopkinton? Yeah. Well, uh, don't 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 tell me you drove, but okay. no, <laughs> but uh, of course. Uh, I went to, and, and uh, uh, after the, uh, I, w I went to Freiburg, as when I, just before I went into the service. Mm -hmm. So when I got out of the service, and to uh, Hopkins, and to uh, Newton. But uh, then uh, time went on, and I, I got a job working, you know. And uh, then I met my wife. I was 21 at the time, but, um, I guess I was about 23 when I met my wife, and uh, we ended up in uh, uh, 1944 or five, I guess it was, or maybe it was 40, 46. Uh, we ended up getting married, mm -hmm. and uh, so we lived in. Uh, we both worked and lived in Newton for some times, and then then the kids come along and all that sort of thing and uh, I uh, got a job working in a bank and uh, as a teller of, in the beginning and uh, so then I, uh, I uh, we moved to uh, good old uh, Hopkinton Massachusetts and uh, uh, the reason we did that my father had a camp uh, that he bought on the water on Lake Massmanock, mm -hmm. right uh, for 500 bucks. <laughs> and uh, so when we get out, uh, one day he says to me, well, do you want to take a ride? So I said, sure. I said, where are we going? He said, Hopkins. I said, where the heck is that? <laughs> so, well, anyway, we got there and he wanted to know how I liked the place there. And 
I said, just the shifts with woods and brush there, you know. But he liked to fish. So I said, gee, it's nice. I said, so that's why I asked him. I said, uh, how's the fishing? He says, good. He said, that's why I bought it. Because somebody that he worked for had a camp there. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what got him going up there. Yeah, all those, uh, all those places around Lake Maspinock at that time were just summer camps. Oh, yeah, people, nobody lived there. A lot there. of people from Boston would come out, yeah. come out and spend a couple nobody months out there. Nobody lived there all year round. Right. They used to have the state police going around and checking to make sure nobody broke in, you know. <laughs> but uh, anyway. So that was back in the, what, early 50s? Well, in 1949, uh, what were the people next door to the slot that we had were taking the living room section off their house and wanted to know if they would want us to take and move it over to our place and fix it up and make a little camp, you know, mm -hmm. so we could go fishing on the weekend, which we did. And we had two double decker bunks and a gas stove. And so we used to go up there and, uh, and fish and what have you. So in 49 is when my father decided to build the house for his retirement on the all winter rides and everything, you know. So we did that for a number of years. And uh, what happened was that uh, I eventually got a job at a bank over in Uxbridge. Mm -hmm. And I worked there as a teller first uh, for several years. And then <clears throat> they built a new branch up in East Douglas, Mass. And they, they made me the branch manager for that, that branch up there. Right. So I worked there until I actually retired. Hmm. And uh, so. Well, you said you retired, but uh, there's, an interesting, uh, there's an interesting story of, of uh, what you've done, some of the things you've done after you retired. And uh, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> maybe you can tell us a little bit. Of, you, you see the picture that I have in front of me. But, yes, uh, I do. <laughs> why don't you tell everyone exactly what that's all about? <laughs> Well, um, my one of my daughters uh, lived in Florida, and her son was in special forces and had been in Afghanistan and was in Afghanistan at the time. And uh, he was coming home on a pass, and I was going to go down there just for a visit, you know, for two weeks. But he and I landed on the same day in Florida, and. Uh, <clears throat> um, we got, uh, my, my daughter said to me on the phone before I went down, I said, Mike wants to know if you want to go skydiving. I said, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but anyway, uh, we got, I got down there, and this was on a Sunday. I didn't say too much Monday, but uh, Monday afternoon and evening, I said, uh, hey, um, Mike, what's the story about this skydiving business? He said, oh, are you sure you would want to do something like that? How old were you at this time? Uh, you were in your well, 80s, right? Well, I was 84, 83 84. or 4, yeah. 80. <laughs> and and uh, so Tuesday came and I put the heat on him. I said, you know, I've something I've decided I want to do this, okay? And he kept saying, you sure you want to do this? <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm sure. I really would like to do that. So Tuesday made the arrangements and we went over there and... <laughs> well, and, and we, have a, we have a picture of you... Uh, uh, skydiving, and this is at age 84. Yeah, that's unbelievable. You and George Bush, uh, the that's, elder. Well, he, that's what I was telling. Him. I said, if he can do it, I can't. I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that was uh, uh, that was certainly fascinating. And and yeah. uh, you were attached to a to a, para, a paratrooper yeah. or, yeah. or a, an instructor. And yeah, um, you going to do it again? No, I tell you what. You know, I had to fill out a big thing with. Uh, my uh, health insurance things, you know, and they weren't taking any chances, you know, but there were a couple of questions they asked that I kind of fudged on a little bit, because <laughs> <you know? laughs> I didn't want them to stop me from going down. Yeah. So, but anyway, um, we you know, we did it. Uh, when I was up in the, and my son, and my grandson went with us up in the plane. There was 15 of us in the plane, and they have like two benches. And he said, they start to jump and you keep going up further and further and further until you get to the opening, you know. And uh, while I was sitting there, this young woman was uh, on my left. She said, well, well, this is my anniversary. And I said, oh, I didn't know whether, whether it should be we're married or a birthday or something like that. She said, yeah, this is my 100th jump today. 100th jump. Yeah. That's she was just a small little thing, you know. <laughs> I said, holy smokes. 
Well, anyway, I get to the opening of the plane ready to go, right? And the fellow says, says, I want you to cross your arms like this. I said, OK. So um, I didn't know why, for sure. But uh, so we're standing there. And then he gives me the, gem, the, the thing to jump, you know, and I did. And uh, I think we got down to, uh, I think, 5,000 feet, I think it might have been. Mm -hmm. I can't, I know, you know, I, I, I can't, I get damn excited. I, I couldn't remember if it was five or five thousand. But I opened up the chute and uh, he says, you'll see a yellow strap on each side. I said, I want you to grab a hold of that. Now pull down. He showed me how they guide the thing, you know. Right. And that was all right. But then didn't he do this? He just took and held on one of them. And the thing is going around and circles that. And I said, holy Jesus, I hope he starts pretty soon. And I'm going <laughs> to heave. <laughs> but it was a very soft landing, mm -hmm. uh, pinpoint landing, actually. And because uh, but when you come in at a little angle and between the two, it was 400 pounds right. going down there. So when you hit and your feet hit the ground, it had the tend you have a tendency to go forward and land it on my knees. And I said, gee, cause that's not the most lovely looking landing I've ever seen. He says, well, that's what you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what happened. <laughs> well, Ralph, it's been ex exciting listening to, uh, listening to you tell stories about your service time and about yeah. uh, what you did uh, uh, after the service and before the service. And, and again, uh, uh, this is Veterans Remember. And my name is Dick Gooding. And uh, we've had this opportunity uh, to spend some time with, with Ralph Edwards and uh, hear about Camp Edwards in Germany and skydiving. And we uh, uh, hope that uh, everyone appreciates the, the, uh, the things that Ralph has done and uh, has lived in Hopkins since the early 50s. And uh, uh, we know that he's still very actively involved with military uh, operations here in, in town, and we want to thank you for your mm -hmm. service. Well, you're welcome. And we want to thank uh, you for joining us here at Veterans Remembered th today. Mm -hmm.